Well, when tragedy strikes, typically you see first responders first. It's built into the name. But what happens after that tragedy, whether it's a house fire that claims the lives of loved ones or a drug bust leaving kids alone in a home not knowing what's next? Well, that's where nonprofits like the Family Advocacy Network in Kearney come in. And where those victims come is about to get a major facelift. Having two interview rooms isn't adequate. Having one observation room isn't adequate. Our numbers just don't support that. Right now, the Carney Family Advocacy Network, also known as FAN, operates in a 2,500-square-foot facility on East 31st Street. It's where they've been since 2001, when they first served about 120 to 150 child victims with only two staff members. And now they're serving more than five times that in the same facility. They are doing exceptional work in a facility that is, is, is not adequate, right? And they still do it. And they do it with passion, they do it with professionalism, and they do it with care. Fortunately for the victims and the workers, FAN is on the move. They're building a new $3.5 million facility on East 26th Street in Kearney with 9,400 square feet. They even recently received a $100,000 investment from the city back on January 10th to help with the move. Kearney Mayor Stan Klaus says it's because how much the city already works with FAN. They're very tightly woven, and uh, it's a, an extension of the law enforcement um, because what you do with the victims, the innocent victims, how do you uh, take care of the innocent victims in some of these situations? Kearney Police Chief Brian Waugh has led KPD for four years now, and while he's newer to the area, he says the impact FAN has had on the area is not. We'll receive letters in the mail from victims that may have been four years old and now they're in college and they're sending letters and saying, you know what, I remember investigator, insert name here, and they really changed my life. Right now, the new facility, as you can see it, is mainly drywall. But FAN Executive Director Jamie Vetter is hoping to have the facility up and running by April or May this spring. And it's all thanks to the support of not only the city, but the community as a whole. Knowing where we've come from and where we're headed to is very humbling because we are a nonprofit. So we are, I mean, at the mercy of the community that supports us. And I've always said the CAC is only as strong as the community that supports them. And so it's, it's very humbling that we have that support and that we have so many people that believe in the mission of the work that we do um, because you don't always have that. Well, Vetter went on to say her task of fundraising for FAN is a double-edged sword because you want the nonprofit to be as private and as invisible as possible for the victims who need that resource, but also visible enough for the community it serves, knowing it is relying on those community supports and donations. So if you would like to give to FAN, we do have details on how to do so on our Local 4 News app. And if you at home enjoyed this good news story here on Local 4, we have some good news story ideas of your own that you might want to share. Please let us know about it. You can submit that on our Nebraska Nice Story Ideas in a variety of ways. You can email the station at desk at ksmblocal4.com or just reach out to me on social media through either my Facebook or Twitter pages. We'd also love to hear from you about the good going on in central Nebraska.